Hey, is your trunk boring in your car, your classic car? You want to update it? You want to make it look a lot better? You want to have something unique when you go to shows? Let me show you how I did it. What I did is I fabricated it, I cut it all out, I wrapped it, and then I matched a color to a custom engine bay color in my car to my trunk panels. And I can show you how you do that. So your trunk doesn't look like yours and it starts to look like this. All right, so we got a bit of a problem. We got to pull all this stuff out. I marked it all, and now I know exactly where everything's going to be permanently. Now I need to mark out for the cutouts, continue all the lines, do all that, cut it all, put it all back in, see how it looks again, and then go from there. Would you believe it? I made a mistake. Let me show you what I did. You will not believe it. This is so dumb. All right, so when I cut those little side panels over there, I was supposed to cut two of them because it's recessed. Now I gotta figure out a way to cut one right behind it. It's gonna be perfect so it's recessed. So that's that one and then this side. Now I gotta figure this out. Oh my God, how am I gonna make it perfect? You're supposed to screw them together and then cut two at a time so they're perfect. Ugh. All right, I think I might have figured it out. Not too bad. I went up, went up to my local Ace Hardware store. I got this little router thing that's kind of like rides against one. It's supposed to shave out the back one. Let's cut them out and do it. Let's see if it works. I saw it on TV. It's got to work, right? YouTube video, man. Love it. Well, you might be wondering why I'm inside, and I'll tell you what. It's because of uh, the freaking rain here in Florida. I'm going to sand up these little corners using some 80 grit sandpaper. I like 80 grit when I'm working with MDF. It just sands really nicely. This is uh, VHA. This is the kind of stuff I use. Good stuff. If you're looking for sandpaper, they make some good products. I really like them, you know what I mean? Like sandpaper, if you ever do any kind of body work or anything like that, man, you go through a lot of freaking sandpaper. I've tried it all. This stuff's really good. I'll, I'll put a link. It's good stuff. And what I'm doing is I'm sanding these edges. Because I was going to sand them later, but then I was like, well, I'm going to be routering this. Why don't I do it right the first time, right? Get this all nice and pretty, then it's going to sand that out nice and pretty. So I was like, I found a, a socket that's the same shape as the corner that I wanted to cut. So it's perfect. I work with what you got, you know? And I mean, people think sometimes that I'm like working at a full shop and it's like, man, I, I'm in the two car garage here. Like, what do you expect from me here? Like, I'm just a guy, you know, sometimes people forget, I'm just a guy building a car in his, in his garage, you know? I'm not, I'm not some sponsored channel, you know what I mean? Like, it's like crazy. What you're witnessing is just a guy who's obsessed with something, who's trying to do it his best, man. Who's like, man, oh man, let's just get this thing done. Some days, man, it's like, oh my gosh, you know? But I tell you, I've been on a streak lately. I've been having a winning streak, you know? Okay, so what I did is I used this funny little bit right here. It has a little bearing that rides across this tough one. Notches that out. Now, this sits nice and recessed, and it goes like this. It's gonna sit in here, nice and recessed. That's how you do that. Got a perfect gap, blade thickness. Can always make that a little bit bigger. All right, so I was looking for some carpet that's gonna match the inside of the car because I wanna continue the same theme. And I found this stuff right here, it's so freaking amazing. This stuff is virtually identical to the carpet kit that I bought for my car, which is crazy because the people who make the carpet kit, they didn't sell the carpet. So I found this stuff, look at this. This stuff is amazing. Nice and flexible and everything. It's gonna look so beautiful in there. Let's cut it, stick it in. All right, so look, we got it cut. We got it sized right. Now we're gonna take it out. We're gonna glue the bottom, glue the top, I think, and then stick it in. When I spray this, I'm gonna fold it like this so I can set it in here, and I'm gonna work one side at a time. Because this stuff, woo, it's sticky. All right, so maybe you wanna spray everything. I don't. I don't wanna spray everything. So I'm gonna use this masking machine. You get one of these from your local hardware store, I swear by them, I love them. First thing when I found one of these things, I was like, oh my God, this makes masking stuff up so much easier. So let's go ahead and do that. You won't believe it. I freaking forgot to get spray adhesive. I'm gonna go to the store and get some, I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back. Let's go ahead and spray the trunk. Got this stuff right here. Pretty cool.
All right, so one of the tips that I wanted to give you is whenever you have something like this where you don't want to get body filler in something, what I do is I like to mask it off, right? It's real straightforward. Mask off when you don't want body filler. So you want to leave enough to where you can use your spreaders, but not so much where you have excess work to do, right? So I don't want any extra inside there. Now, the other tip is, the other tip is that if you want to be able to have a straight tape, is you start from one end and you just go all the way to the other end and then you run your finger through it. After I lay the body filler in here, then I'll pull this tape off and do the rest of it. This, this body filler that I use, F-Grip, it's going to dry so fast that I'm not going to be able to put body filler in there and then fill in all these little, little pinholes, stuff like that, which is what I have to do. So I'll be mixing multiple stages. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, another thing I like to do before I mix my, my stuff is I like to make sure that I have a body filler spreader that is good to go, right? So this one's a little bit dirty. And if this was a professional job, like if I was doing this for a customer, I probably wouldn't use this. I wouldn't even bother. It's just waste, waste my time. So what I want to do is I want to kind of press right in here to kind of recreate that shape. Kind of run it along the same all the way across just like that. So now I know exactly the route that I'm going to take. Now let's mix up the hardener and let's put it in. So I want to put a bunch in here. I'm going to go here, get some in the middle. All these little spots. And get in here like this. Now I think I've got enough on here. Got to kind of spread it there. There we go. All right. Now while this is still wet, I'm going to go ahead and peel this off. Just because it makes it easier later on for me. And that's just personal preference. You can leave it on if you want. And now I don't have any body filler in those two grooves. And now I just run a contour in there. Sand that out nicely. All right, so as a professional painter, sometimes you gotta buy other guns, right? So for this, this is a, a nice little gun setup I found. It comes with three different tips. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. It comes with them already packaged up so you don't have to kind of figure out which one's which. So let's go ahead and set this gun up. Get this thing out of here real quick. Really nice looking. Feels good. Looks good. Trigger full's nice. Yeah, I like it. Let's put a put an airline fitting on there and then we'll tighten it up. All right, there it is. Check it out. Pretty nice. Pretty nice gun. All the dials you need, all the setups, all the adjustments. Nice little thing. You can put a little filter down there if you want. Comes with one. That's good to go. Let's go ahead and use it. All right, so this stuff looks about like orange juice. Has about the consistency of, I don't know, but either way, I'm gonna put about eight ounces in there, see how that works. See how much that sprays for reference. Now it says to spray 80% coverage. I've never used this gun. I'm gonna spray just a little test period right here. Kind of see. Yeah, looks not too bad. <coughs> okay, it says about two to five minutes. Still seems a little bit glossy there. We're gonna let that dry a little bit more. A little bubbly there. It says to do 100% around the edges for coverage. So that's what I did. So you're wondering like, why even bother with this, right? This stuff is supposed to be much better. This Landau spray, this DAP Landau spray. This stuff is supposed to be like 10 times stronger than the aerosol kind of versions that you can buy. I was having problems with it never really sticking on there properly. So I went ahead and switched to this. Bought a gallon of this stuff and it's, uh, hopefully it's going to solve all the problems. We're going to see here. This is pretty much dry, except I put a lecture on the corners like I probably, if I didn't spray so much on there, I would probably be good to go right now. Maybe that's why a lot of them, they just do a coat on here. And then they put it on and they flip it over and they spray the backside. That's probably what I'll do next time. Still a little bit sticky. See here, it's not sticky at all. It's, it's completely dry there. So it's just around the edges where I put the extra. This. Oh my gosh. Now that is amazing. Never has aerosol glue worked like that in all the times I've ever done it. That stuff 
is well worth it. Definitely should get some. All right, so we got a little bit of a problem. The paint that I was gonna use to color match my engine bay, I'm out of. And wouldn't you know it, I didn't write down the paint code. So I've gotta rematch what I made before, which is gonna be really hard without a paint code. That looks a little bit bright. Let's go check it out in the, in the, the car. <laughs> 